I'll be honest with you, I've lived UK nearly all of my life, subhanAllah. And I've never been targeted personally because of the clothing I was wearing. And I never felt a conversation came to an end because of clothing I was wearing. If anything, it starts because of the Actually, clothing. to be honest, it started. But then again, I'm not going to make my experience of course. everyone else's experience. There are people who are targeted for their clothing, what they wear, may Allah make it easy for them. I mean, the people who live in other parts of Europe where obviously it's not as multicultural, if they decide to wear jeans and a t-shirt to in pur- for the for the sake of giving da'wah, sometimes you even, even have du'a, to, like giving da'wah online. Again, it's, they, allowed, it's allowed. It's allowed. Not, no one's saying it's haram. As long as it fulfills the criteria and the obligation to cover your... Yeah, it's not haram. It's, but it's... It's something I wouldn't feel comfortable. I wouldn't feel comfortable in going to uh, person. I'm not saying it's just my perf- personal preference. I don't want to impose that on everybody else because my personal preference is only mine. But um, I'm saying that uh, as a Muslim, I don't know. I just as a Muslim, I wanna I wanna be different, mm. and that might mean that might mean me wearing Pakistani, you know, uh, kameez. Like mm. I prefer that way before wearing. A suit or jeans. Suit, jeans. Suit. I prefer wearing uh, an Arab Muslim's culture, clothing with ulama wear or clothing Somalis wear or clothing which African wear. Then, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. then jumping on the clothing worn by, yeah. any, generally worn by non Muslims. I just want to look different to them. Sure. Not that I'm saying that the Somali ma'awis that we wear is like somehow from the Prophet Ali. It's a sunnah. They're a bit Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa But, Coming to the and um, the monkey suit, I call it monkey suit. Coming to the monkey suit, don't you think to yourself that Subhanallah, some people who wear it, we could actually say that their their suits are haram because the trousers are so it's tight, too tight, and the, and yeah, and the blazer is so tight. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a potential argument. I also think that I mean, in that situation, what is someone to do when their office mandates upon them? You can't wear a thobe in the office in a corporate world in Canary Wharf. No, but why can't you just wear a bit? You know, like a looser one, a bit of looser one. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, remember the word sarawil. The word sarawil, I'm not right? <laughs> the word sarawil, mm. it's. Uh, in the Arabic language, is different from the word bantalon. Oh. Trousers bantalon, where the people wear. Okay. The tight stuff they wear. Sarawi like in, is the one you, 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 in the Indians, they, they wear it as well, the Pakistanis. Yeah, yeah, I know what the you mean. The big one, the leg, yeah. the bottom. You can, it's got, but you can't wear that in the office, man. No, like, I'm saying that's sarawi, that's good. That's nice. That's very nice because your aura doesn't show, it's fadfad. It's very good. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you're going to wear the monkey suit, make sure you it's not too tight. Because some people, they come to the mystery, they pray, and then you can see their backside, sure. their outer showing, it's so tight. Even when they walk, they, they, they it's like they're struggling. Mm. Uh, so I'm And of course, about, above the ankles as well. Right? And again, it has to be above the ankles. There are things that you have to observe. Yeah. Yeah, by the way, it can't be below the ankles. That's what it is. It can't be on the ankle, by the way. Okay. Okay. We just loosely say above the ankles. Yes, so you're right. Um, and I think just one more thing that I'd add probably from the Dawah perspective is that I can actually see and I've seen experiences uh, where people actually dress, for example, in the Islamic dress, actually are more productive in giving Dawah because there's an element of that the person who is giving Dawah to looks at him like, you really believe in what you believe, don't you? Like it's, it's changed your whole life. Like it really affects you. And that kind of conviction that he can see in you can often be a means for him to really think about, am I really convicted about my own beliefs? That's true. Whereas that when there's someone thinks, oh, for the sake of that one, I'm going to wear jeans and a t-shirt so they can relate to me. They're just thinking, well, there's not really much difference between you and you and me. You know, I can just carry on living my life the way I am. Don't you think like, uh, your, even your personal experience, don't you think like sometimes the clothing you wear has an effect on your reactions and your, your, do, your dealings? 100%. I've, I've actually come from previously the corporate world where, for example, I was wearing a, a monkey suit, as you would call it. And it affects the way you think. Mm. It affects the way you, your action affects the way you move. Even the, an act of worship like the salah, for example, in the masjid, wearing in a suit is not the same feeling as wearing it, as, as doing it in a thobe. Yeah, yeah. I just, it's hard to put your finger on it, but there's true, a, a profound effect between the clothing you wear. Yeah, you and know. I suppose this is why the sharia places such a huge importance yeah, on know. it. The clothing you wear and the actions and even your mindset. Yeah, you know. I'm not going to lie, even me personally, when I'm driving and, you know, I've got my imama on, I've got my hat on my head, I've got my thobe on, and it's visible, and a car cuts me, I'm calm, no problem, brother, take care, make sure you watch next time. Mm -hmm. Honestly, and I'm not the type to get angry anyways, Mm -hmm. I don't have this road rage that people have and they get angry and they just talk people, generally I don't even have that asana. They cut me, it's just, you know, (laughs) you might cut someone else and they might do something to you. But, 
the way I react, I might not be happy with what this person does, but I never respond and never vulgar, of course. Mm. But I act more sensible because I know I'm, 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 sure. I'm, 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 I'm resembling something, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm what the, I have to hold uphold what the Prophet sallallahu would have done in this situation. What would he have done, Ali sallam? And I know a brother, Subhanallah, a group of brothers actually, to be honest. <laughs> they said to me that when they're in the roads and they, they get road rage, they get angry. They're like, whenever we want to get at this person and insult them, we take off our hat, we <sighs> follow on the front seat, yeah. and we start saying things. And then when we when he leaves, we put a hat on. <laughs> yeah, I see. It's one I remember, Subhanallah. Here, UAE, I basically was driving and I uh, had uh, got lost. So, and you know, this country, the, the signs are a bit sometimes yeah, hard. Yeah. <clears throat> so the sat-nav said, turn right, turn right. I was like, oh no. I looked. Uh, I just had, and I cut the front car. Yeah. So he got angry, really uh, took it personal. So he, he came, he cut me, oh. and he braked right in front of me, you know? Yeah. So for me, it's, I did it to you, you did it to me. But then he came to, we came to traffic light, he got out of the car, he got angry, came to the window, very angry, he was very angry. Because he, what made him even more angry is because I smiled. Oh, and I was only I smiling like, as in like, don't worry about it, we're so good. Like, so you good. Know, to be you polite, did, you, yeah, yeah, you did to me. But he thought you were laughing at him or something, maybe. So he came in the window and he said to me, as soon as he saw me, and he saw my thobe, he saw my imama, he saw, you know, he said, you're a practicing brother, man. Oh. Why are you doing And I said, oh, brother, I'm using a stand up. I don't know the city. Mm. I caught you. You did it to me. And I smiled because you got me back. I have no rights to get angry. <clears throat> But look how it is. Clothing makes people say you have to uphold a particular. Do you understand my point? Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. I know. I know. But like people in the UK, for example, it's not just limited to clothing. It's even the beard, for example, it will actually stop you from committing sins. Yeah, it does. there might be people who would normally, <clears throat> before they grow their beard, they might be thinking about going to the club, for example. Mm. You'd never dare walk into a club with a beard. It's just you know that I don't belong in here. It's just all the Barbie will not go to a club. Yeah, so true. Yeah, Willie Daddy says. <clears throat> All these acts, the outer appearance that we have as Muslims, we have to understand it's, it's to actually tell us in advance what we're going to fall short in. I know a sister who fell off. I asked her a question. I said, she came to the, you know, help me. I am problems. Okay, first question. What was the first thing that happened before you, yeah, and you started listening to music, you started doing this, started, what was first? She said, I, I took off my hijab. Mm. It is a hijab, not physically, but it's also a spiritual hijab. It mm. conceals all these problems from you. The woman, she takes off her niqab, just the niqab that she takes off. Then the jilbab comes, then it becomes a khimar. Then sometimes the hair is showing. And sometimes this is not. The point I'm trying to come to is the outer appearance has a strong effect on the heart.